I have my ultrasound appointment this morning to see if those cysts are still on my ovaries. Ugh, it just kills me that this even happened. No, like this is my two week wait. This is our first IUI. It was implantation time. I was super pumped. Devastating because I feel like we had a really good chance that month and I feel like I ruined it. Hi guys, I'm in the car today, obviously. Um, I have my ultrasound appointment this morning to see if those cysts are still on my ovaries. I'm hoping and praying that there are no more cysts so that we can proceed with IUI this month. Um, if there are cysts, I'm gonna have to have surgery and then that will postpone everything much longer. So fingers crossed that everything goes well, that they don't see any cysts and that we can proceed with IUI. I'll keep you updated as we go along. Hey guys, it's a little bit later. So my appointment went pretty well. Um, it was a normal ultrasound. She didn't say anything or couldn't say anything, you know, in the appointment um, about what she saw because, you know, they don't want to give you basically false hope by saying, oh, we don't see anything. And then later um, calling and saying they found cysts or something. So just kind of a routine ultrasound. Um, nothing of note, I guess, to mention. I am picking up my Avadril shot because the plan is that if there are no cysts, I will start Clomid tonight for five days, and then I go back for another ultrasound on cycle day 12, which is about a week from today, so seven days. Um, and if things are going well with the Clomid and all of that, they don't see any issues, then we will proceed with the Avadril shot and then we will do the IUI procedure. So fingers crossed that I don't get any bad news today that we can proceed with the Clomid and proceed with Avadril. Um, I'm just waiting to get my Avadril prescription right now. It wasn't quite ready so I have to wait a few minutes here before, um, before I can pick it up and then I'm going straight to work. So great way to start the day getting probed and waiting around a lot. So yeah, it just seems like with infertility, it just feels like a lot of waiting. <laughs> just waiting for good news, waiting for the next month, waiting for the next step, waiting for some good news somewhere. So, um, I mean, I, I don't mean to be so negative. There is a lot of good that has come from all of these appointments, and, and I've learned a lot through this journey, but it's just... It's hard sometimes, you know, like sometimes you just wish that you could be normal like everybody else or normal um, and not have to struggle so hard just to get pregnant, to start a family. But um, it's all part of the journey. It's all going to be worth it in the end. So, yeah, let's just hope for good news. Hi, guys. It's me again on a different day. Um, so just wanted to um, bleh, just want to catch you up on what's happening. So last time I checked in with you, um, they were going to look for cysts on my ovaries to see if they were gone. Um, luckily, there are no cysts, so I was able to go back on Clomid to try the IUI process this month. It was really, really exciting. I was super nervous that I was gonna need surgery. Um, sorry, I'm getting a message on my screen. I was afraid that I was going to need surgery to remove the cysts, but luckily um, they went away on their own with that two month break. So I'm hoping that the exercise and eating healthy um, really helped. I'm not really sure what causes cysts or how to get rid of them. Maybe everything I did didn't matter, um, but either way it felt good to feel like I was um, healing my body in a way by eating healthy and by exercising more. So cysts are gone. I had my follicle checked today, um, so I took Clomid for five days, and then two days later on cycle day 12, I needed to come back for a follicle check. So they found two really big follicles, and a third one that is starting to grow or get to be kind of a large follicle too. So technically I have like two and a half follicles right now. Um, that's really good. So the plan is for me to take my Avadril shot tonight um, between 6 and 8 p.m. Then we are to have intercourse tonight after that shot. 
then on Thursday, which is two days from now, we have our um, scheduled appointment for insemination. So how that works is my husband shows up at about 8.30 for his appointment. He goes back, does what he needs to do, gives them the sample. Then at 11 o'clock, we have my appointment for the actual insemination to take place. So I will keep you updated with what's happening. Um, that's just the schedule that we were given for now. So hopefully I don't hear from my doctor later today um, saying that plans have changed or they found an issue. So fingers crossed that we can do IUI this month. Um, this journey has been absolutely insane and pretty much has just rocked me to my core. Um, you know, some days I <laughs> still can't believe, you know, that this is my journey and my story, but I am so grateful and thankful that we have technology to help people like me become pregnant. Um, here's to the best and I will keep you updated on what the plan is. Um, we'll also record the shot tonight so you can kind of see how that goes. All right, wish me luck. Thanks. Hi friends, just wanted to update you on how things have been going. Uh, I would be sitting in the chair, but a little princess took my spot. So she gets priority over the seating in the house. So she's gonna just use a chair and I'm, I'm happy on the floor. It's fine, it's where I belong, right? I'm her little servant. So anyway, so in the last uh, scene, you saw that Zach administered my Avadril shot. Um, it didn't really hurt, it was just like a little pinch and then um, didn't bleed, at least not that I noticed on the napkin or paper towel, tissue, whatever it was that I used. Um, so that was great. So then we go in for the IUI procedure, which I think was the next day. It was the next morning. So we go in for the procedure, well, not right away. So Zach has to have his appointment first at around 8.30 in the morning, gives his sample. It was super awkward. There was like people in and out of the office and he was just in this like little tiny closet room. He said there was nothing in there but a chair and then the little window to put your sample in, which is kind of weird. I always envisioned they would have like magazines for them to look at or something but I guess it's not really sanitary and people like touch that and Ew. things happen in there so you could have messy magazines and stuff I don't know but anyway I, I was just picturing there would be some reading material for him to use but he said it was just a blank room with a chair in the corner um, which was <laughs> kind of awkward and it sounds kind of like he was walking into uh, uh, like a, the Saw movie or something where something bad's gonna happen and there's just this like lonely chair in the corner that you have to sit on and use or you can sit on and use and who knows who's even sat on that Ugh, like there's been a lot of other people there so i don't know but he said it was super awkward he could hear everybody in the office they had like light music playing and he tried to turn it up to kind of drown out people talking in the office and in the waiting room but the knob was broken so yeah i think it wasn't the most pleasant experience for him but we got it done Sample was taken, sent back to the lab, they spun it, washed it, got all the bad sperm out, left only the good, healthy sperm. So then my appointment was at 11.30. So we had to kill about an hour and a half after he did his thing. Um, so we just went to Target, walked around, shopped. I had never been to the Target in Minneapolis, so that was kind of different. Um, but we just kind of killed some time and then we had, um, some food from Target. I was really hungry at that point, but since I'm gluten-free and dairy-free and we don't eat meat, it was kind of hard to find like a grab-and-go at Target. Everything had cheese, everything had like beef jerky in it or, or some form of like chicken or meat or pork. And so 
like a lot of the salads were out. Um, I could have I could have picked out the chicken, I guess, in a salad, and that would have been fine. But we wanted kind of like a lunchable style thing. But that's pretty much if you eat meat. If you don't eat meat, and you can't have dairy, those lunchables are pretty much out because they usually always have meat and cheese in them. So I opted for this like really kind of gross egg salad. But anyway, that's besides the point. So we had lunch in the car and then we went to the appointment. And you go into this little room, which is very similar to like the room you would go to for a gynecology appointment. And you put your feet in the stirrups, you, you know, you change, you get naked, you put the little um, gown on or like the little, um, I just had a sheet that I could cover myself with and you put your butt on the end of the table, you put your feet in the stirrups and um, the nurse, you know, came in, she read off his count of how many million sperm um, were in the sample and so that was kind of interesting, I guess, to hear. Um, but then they just do the procedure, they stick the catheter in, um, she had a hard time getting to my uterus or finding my uterus uh, opening because my bladder was empty, which they never told me to have a full bladder. So I was kind of, I felt bad because I could tell that she was having a little bit of trouble um, getting the catheter in. But um, yeah, they didn't tell me that I should have a full bladder. So kind of not my fault. I don't know. But so what I had to do is I had to press on my lower belly like pretty hard and then she said it pushed it down so she could see it. So anyway, we got the catheter in and she did the procedure, uh, took a whole five minutes with the nurse to do the whole thing. And then I had to lay there for 10 minutes. So she started a timer and I just laid there and Zach and I talked and kind of let everything go where it needed to go. So then the procedure was done and you pretty much are told just to go home and live life normally. You know, of course, no drinking, no smoking if you're a smoker. Um, they just recommended that day that I don't do any running or any heavy exercise because they want the sperm to stay in there and kind of have time to do what it needs to do. Um, and so really, I felt fine. There was a little bit of cramping during the procedure. Kind of felt slightly similar to that um, HSG or is it HCG um, that procedure that you get where they flush the, the dye into your fallopian tubes and just to make sure that they're open so cramping a little bit like that kind of like that burning in your you can feel like your fallopian tubes so I had a little bit of that during the IUI but when I got home um, there was some slight cramping I do remember that and then one thing that I mentioned I've got my notepad here so that's why I'm looking down um, was that I felt very bloated in my lower abdomen. Like I was very aware of where my ovaries were and I was very aware of like that part of my body. I just felt like sometimes when you feel bloated, it's a little bit higher in your stomach and it just feels like gas pain, but this was lower. It was almost like I had a balloon inside of my um, fallopian tubes and my ovaries and it just felt like expanded and heavy, if that makes sense. And I'm assuming that's just because the sperm is like in your fallopian tubes and they just flushed it with so much like liquid from that, which doesn't normally, hold on, Excuse I'm being stepped on. Me. Which doesn't normally happen uh, in like a natural process, but when they do that syringe, they kind of like force all that fluid in there. And so I just felt very uncomfortable and full. I just felt like if I were gonna bend or like try to do like a sit up, that my uh, fallopian tubes and my ovaries would like explode. Like they just felt very full. So the rest of the day, I just kind of was very careful, like sitting down, I had to like lean back a little bit because I just felt like very heavy down there. So yeah, it was a weird sensation. Um, went to bed the next day, I felt fine. Like the rest of the week or the, during the two week wait, I felt fine. So that was the really only side effect that I would say that I had from the IUI procedure besides a little bit of cramping. 
Um, but then, you know, the two week wait, I was really excited. Things were going really well. I, you know, was looking on my Kindara app, tracking the days, like how many DPO I was or things like that. And, and we were getting really close to the implantation stage. So we were on like six DPO to eight DPO. And I was like, all right, I know that I shouldn't be focusing on like feeling those implantation cramps, but I just wanted it to work so badly that I was like waiting to feel that like cramping that people describe and that like implantation pressure and tingling. And so every day at six DPO or six days past ovulation, like from then until like eight, nine, ten, I was like every day kind of very aware of any cramping or any movement or sensation that I was having in my uterus, which I mean, it can drive you mad if, if you're always just focusing on the symptoms that you're feeling because you want to be pregnant so bad. But I did it anyway. I don't care what you say. Judge me all you want. I totally was like waiting to feel those implantation cramps. So here comes the really bad part or the really sad part of the whole thing that ugh, it just kills me that this even happened. So I have been going to the office because we're training a new employee and it's my responsibility since they're on my team, I'm the supervisor. When we hire a new employee for my team, it is my responsibility to make sure to train them in, have them introduced to everybody, kind of have them shadow me or sit with them, look over their shoulder, make sure they, they're getting all their questions answered. So I had been going to the office for two weeks straight before this IUI procedure. And that's just because it was my responsibility to do it. So normally we go in two days a week um, and we're at home, but I committed to going in for two weeks to help train because I just feel like that helps them learn a little bit faster when um, like I could have other colleagues go in and help with training, but I just feel like since it's my responsibility, I need to step up and I just need to do it. So work is about 45 minutes away. So that's kind of a long commute, but I'm not, I'm not complaining about that anyway. So I've been in the office training this new employee. We do the IUI procedure and it's his second week and we do the IUI procedure. So I was like, it'll be great. So then the two week wait, like things will kind of slow down. I can, pro he can probably start working from home and then I won't have to go back and forth so much. So then I'm at about eight days past ovulation when implantation is critical between like eight and 10 DPO. Uh, it can go to like 12 DPO, but usually it's like eight to 10 are the days when implantation can occur. And I started to feel achy. We had a chiropractor appointment and I remember leaving that appointment and I just felt like something was wrong. Like something wasn't right in my body. My legs felt tingly, achy. I just, my arms were really sensitive, especially like in this area. I just remember telling Zach, my husband, like, I don't feel right. Like, like my skin hurts. This is weird. Like your skin shouldn't hurt. Like I didn't work out hard. I haven't been doing anything strenuous, so I shouldn't be sore. And then, I started to get a headache as the night went on. It was around 8 p.m. and I just had this like bad headache like right here in the top of your head and it was just throbbing and I was like, something isn't right. Like these aches are coming on really bad. I'm having this really weird bad headache. I don't get headaches anymore, at least not often um, because I go to the chiropractor and that's kind of a preventative for that. So just the fact that I had a headache, especially right after an appointment where they cracked my neck and everything, everything should be aligned and I should be feeling good. But I started to get a headache. Then I noticed that my throat was kind of getting sore and I was starting to lose my voice the more that I talked. And I just thought, you know what? Like maybe I'm just running myself ragged. I've been going to the office. For two weeks now, I've been getting up earlier than normal because I have to make that 45 minute commute. My body's going through all these changes, all these hormones were just pumped into me. We had the IOI procedure. Maybe I'm just really stressed. So I'm just gonna sleep it off 
And if I still feel sick tomorrow, I won't go to the office. I'll just let my team know that like, I'm not feeling well and I'm not gonna be there. Um, but if I feel fine, then I'll just get up and I'll go to work. So I wake up the next morning well, I basically barely slept because the symptoms kept getting worse and worse and worse. And by the middle of the night, I was having chills. Like I was just so cold, I could not warm up. I had like all the blankets wrapped around me and I'm just shivering and I'm thinking, great, I probably have a fever. And if I have a fever, I wonder if I could have COVID. And I haven't had COVID. I've been avoiding her for the last two years and Thank God that by some miracle, people around me were getting COVID. I was avoiding it. People that I had like been hanging out with the day before, you know, had had COVID and I always came out healthy. So I haven't had COVID at all during the two years of this pandemic and I've been really lucky. And so I just started thinking like, I wonder if I got COVID from the office because some of my staff members have been in and out like saying they had COVID and I've been trying to like keep my distance from um, like other people in the office. I've been washing my hands, using sanitizer. I've been getting like eight hours of sleep, eating healthy, exercising. And so I just was like, oh, I wonder if maybe I wasn't being so careful because I was so used to being in the office at this point for two weeks um, that maybe I just got it from being there so often and around, you know, all these different people. Um, who I don't normally see. And so um, I barely slept and I felt really weak and I took my temp and it was at 102. Like I felt so cold that I was shivering, but when I would feel my skin, like it felt hot. So I was like, great. So I took my temp, I used my BBT uh, my basal body thermometer to take my temp and it was like going off like crazy because it, it's used to ranges in the like 97 98 degrees and here i was like 102 so it was like beep 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 beep, beep like telling me like hey something's wrong so anyway that first night was horrible i woke up and i was like damn like i'm sick i either have the flu or i have covid and so we um i let my Coworkers know that I wasn't gonna be there. Luckily, it was a day when most everybody else was there so they could cover for me for training our new employee. But um, I woke up and I started to work. Oh, excuse me, falling, fall, falling off the thing here, the chair. So uh, after I knew I had a fever, of course, I wasn't gonna go to the office. So I um, had Zach's mom meet him halfway because we sent her a text in the morning just letting her know that I wasn't feeling well. Um, and it was, we were gonna see them that weekend and so I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't anything that um, others could get. So they met halfway, we live like 15 minutes away from each other and she had some extra COVID tests. So she said that she would give them to us and I could take one and then I wouldn't have to, like Zach wouldn't have to go out to Walgreens and go shopping and buy one. So we just used one of her <clears throat> extras that she had. So I took the test and at this point I still had chills I still had body aches, like everything was super sensitive. It just hurt to move. I had a sore throat. I was sneezing. I was coughing at this point, And I knew for sure that I had something, maybe just the flu. So I took my little at home COVID test and within two minutes of that little um, line, kind of the, the liquid that you drop, like it going to show you the results, it was like, bam. I had two lines immediately. So I was like, oh, I have COVID. No, like this is my two week wait. This is our first IUI. It was implantation time. I was super pumped and I got COVID. And I have a super high fever. And if anything's gonna kill, like everything that's been working in there, it's gonna be a fever because my body is just fighting COVID. And it's not gonna know like, hey, this egg is okay. like let it implant and start a pregnancy. No, my body is saying, whoa, like you are a hostile environment right now. There are some things going on and we're just gonna kill everything that we can. So I'm pretty sure that that nixed our chances and we were not able to conceive because I had a fever of 102 for like two days. Um, and my body was just trying to fight to keep me healthy and it wasn't viable for a pregnancy at that time. So I'm sure that it just, 
eliminated it because um, things weren't safe, I guess, for a pregnancy to happen. So I knew that that's probably what the, the chances were gonna happen, but I still had a week before I could take my pregnancy test. So I was still praying and hoping that maybe somehow my body recognized that this egg was not something, not a threat that it could kill and get rid of, but you know, unfortunately, um, I ended up getting my period, which was super disappointing. It was like just devastating because I feel like we had a really good chance that month and I feel like I ruined it because I was careless in the office and I ended up getting COVID and it was just really disappointing. So, yeah, I mean, I'm still recovering. <clears throat> I'm sure you can tell. I kind of sound nasally like, did I do that? If you guys know who Urkel is, I just feel like I sound like Urkel still. And I, this was last week that I had COVID. So I'm still recovering. I'm still blowing my nose a lot. I sound nasally, still coughing here and there. Um, but all of the other symptoms are gone. So we're starting our next IUI cycle. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to update you on my first cycle to kind of tell you what happened and uh, kind of inform you of my journey and just let you know that, yeah, the first one didn't work, which really sucks. But all we can do is pick ourselves up, the, uh, up off the floor, move on, focus on the next one, and I'm praying that this next one will go more smoothly and hopefully it will result in a pregnancy. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Uh, if you have any comments, just if this ever has happened to you, I'm not sure how common it is for someone to get COVID right when they're in the two week wait, but uh, I just feel like it was kind of, I wasted our chance is how I'm feeling. But yeah, just leave me a comment below if you have any questions. Um, and make sure to give me a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. Thanks.